Imagine living in a house that is bigger than a football field, travels faster than a bullet, and circles the Earth 16 times a day. Sounds impossible, right? Well, not for the brave men and women who call the International Space Station, ISS, their home. The ISS is the most ambitious and complex engineering project ever undertaken in space, and it is a testament to human ingenuity and cooperation. But how does this amazing structure work? How do the astronauts survive and thrive in the harsh environment of space? And what secrets and mysteries lie behind the walls of this orbiting laboratory? In this video, we will reveal the inner workings of the ISS and take you on a thrilling journey inside its modules, systems, and facilities. You will discover how the ISS gets its power from the sun, how it recycles water and air, how it protects the crew from radiation and debris, and how it supports hundreds of scientific experiments that can benefit life on Earth and beyond. You will also witness some of the breathtaking views and incredible feats that the astronauts experience every day, such as seeing 16 sunrises and sunsets, floating in weightlessness, and performing spacewalks to maintain and upgrade the station. Along the way, you will learn some of the lesser-known facts and events about the ISS, such as its cost, its lifespan, its future plans, and its role in the exploration of the solar system. Before we talk about the different modules that make up the ISS, let's first understand what a module is. A module is a pressurized unit that serves a specific function, such as a laboratory, a living space, or a docking port. The ISS has 16 pressurized modules, which are connected by nodes, airlocks, and adapters. The modules come from different countries and agencies, and they reflect the diversity and cooperation of the ISS partners. The U.S. Destiny Laboratory Module is the primary research facility of the U.S. Orbital Segment. It was launched in 2001, and it hosts a variety of scientific experiments in fields such as biology, physics, medicine, and earth science. The Destiny module also contains the main computer system and the robotic workstation for the Canadarm, the station's robotic arm. The Destiny module is connected to the Harmony node, which serves as a hub for other modules and vehicles. The Russian Zvezda service module is the core of the Russian orbital segment. It was launched in 2000, and it provides the main life support systems, such as oxygen, water, and power for the station. The Zvezda module also contains the main engines for orbital maneuvers, the guidance and navigation system, and the communication and control system. The Zvezda module is connected to the Zarya module, which was the first module of the ISS launched in 1998. The Zarya module serves as a storage and propulsion module, and it also connects to the Unity node, which links the US and Russian segments. The European Columbus Laboratory module is the main research facility of the European Space Agency, ESA. It was launched in 2008, and it hosts a variety of scientific experiments in fields such as biology, physics, medicine, and material science. The Columbus module also contains the European robotic arm, which can assist with external maintenance and experiments. The Columbus module is connected to the Harmony node, next to the Destiny module. The Japanese Kibo Laboratory Module is the largest module of the ISS and the main research facility of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA. It was launched in multiple flights between 2008 and 2009, and it consists of three parts. The Pressurized Module, the Exposed Facility, and the Experiment Logistics Module. The Kibo module hosts a variety of scientific experiments in fields such as biology, physics, astronomy, and Earth observation. The Kibo module also contains the Japanese robotic arm, which can transfer payloads between the pressurized module and the exposed facility. The Kibo module is connected to the Harmony node, opposite to the Columbus module. These are some of the main modules that make up the ISS, Stay tuned to learn more about the solar arrays, the life support systems, the crew quarters, and the spacewalks. One of the most critical systems on the ISS is the Environmental Control and Life Support System, ECLSS, 
which provides a permanent and comfortable environment for humans in space. The ECLSS consists of several interconnected and interdependent machines that perform various functions, such as providing oxygen, removing carbon dioxide, regulating temperature and humidity, recycling water, and filtering air. It also faces some unique challenges and solutions for life support in microgravity, such as fire safety, waste management, and noise reduction. The ECLSS provides oxygen for breathing by using two methods, electrolysis and oxygen generation. Electrolysis is the process of splitting water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen using electricity. The oxygen is then stored in tanks and distributed to the cabin, while the hydrogen is vented overboard or used for other purposes. Oxygen generation is the process of extracting oxygen from carbon dioxide using a chemical reaction. The carbon dioxide is captured from the cabin air using a device called a carbon dioxide removal assembly, which uses a material called zeolite to absorb the gas. The carbon dioxide is then exposed to high temperatures and pressures to release the oxygen, which is then added to the cabin air. The remaining carbon dioxide is vented overboard. It removes carbon dioxide from the cabin air using two methods, adsorption and regeneration. Adsorption is the process of trapping carbon dioxide molecules on the surface of a material, such as zeolite or lithium hydroxide. Regeneration is the process of releasing the trapped carbon dioxide molecules from the material using heat or vacuum. It uses both methods to maintain a safe level of carbon dioxide in the cabin, which is about 0.5% or less. It also monitors and controls the levels of other gases in the cabin, such as nitrogen, oxygen, argon, and trace contaminants using sensors and valves. It regulates the temperature and humidity of the cabin air using a system of heat exchangers, pumps, fans, and ducts. The heat exchangers transfer heat between the cabin air and a liquid coolant loop, which circulates a mixture of water and ethylene glycol. The coolant loop also transfers heat between the internal and external thermal control systems, which use radiators and ammonia loops to dissipate heat to space. The pumps and fans circulate the cabin air and the coolant fluid, while the ducts distribute the air to different modules and locations. It also controls the humidity of the cabin air by using a device called a humidity control and condensing assembly, which collects the water vapor from the air and sends it to the water recovery system. It maintains the temperature of the cabin air between 18 degrees Celsius and 27 degrees Celsius. 65 degrees Fahrenheit and 80 degrees Fahrenheit and the humidity between 25% and 75%. It recycles water by using a system of filters, processors, and tanks. The water recovery system collects wastewater from various sources, such as urine, sweat, condensation, and hygiene. The wastewater is then treated by a series of processes, such as distillation, filtration, oxidation, and disinfection to remove impurities and contaminants. The treated water is then stored in tanks and distributed to the crew for drinking, food preparation, and hygiene. The water recovery system also produces oxygen as a byproduct of electrolysis, which is then used for breathing. The water recovery system recycles about 93% of the water on the ISS, reducing the need for resupply from Earth. The ECLSS filters air by using a system of fans, filters, and sensors. The air filtration system removes dust, particles, and microorganisms from the cabin air using devices such as high-efficiency particulate air, EPA, filters, activated carbon filters, and ultraviolet germicidal irradiation, UVGI, lamps. The air filtration system also removes volatile organic compounds, VOCs, such as formaldehyde, ethanol, and acetone, from the cabin air using devices such as catalytic oxidizers, charcoal canisters, and ionizers. The air filtration system also monitors and alarms the crew of any hazardous or toxic substances in the cabin air, such as ammonia, hydrogen, or smoke.
It also faces some challenges and solutions for life support in microgravity, such as fire safety, waste management, and noise reduction. Fire safety is a major concern on the ISS, as fire can spread quickly and cause damage to the station and the crew. The ECLSS helps prevent and detect fire by maintaining a low oxygen level in the cabin, installing smoke detectors and fire extinguishers, and training the crew on fire emergency procedures. Waste management is another challenge on the ISS, as waste can accumulate and pose health and environmental risks. It helps manage waste by reducing, reusing, and recycling waste materials such as water, food, and clothing, and disposing of non-recyclable waste by sending it to the cargo vehicles that burn up in the atmosphere. Noise reduction is also a challenge on the ISS, as noise can affect the crew's health and performance. It ECLSS helps reduce noise by using acoustic insulation, vibration isolation, and noise cancellation devices and providing the crew with earplugs and headphones. These are some of the main features and functions of the ECLSS on the ISS, but there are many more details and challenges. Stay tuned to learn more about the crew quarters, the spacewalks, and the future plans for the ECLSS. Living and working on the ISS is a unique and challenging experience for the crew members who have to adapt to the microgravity environment and the confined space of the station. The crew members have their own personal spaces, called crew quarters, where they can sleep, relax, and communicate with their families and friends. The crew quarters are small, but cozy, and they provide visual, light, and acoustic isolation for the crew member. The crew quarters are equipped with a sleeping bag, a laptop, a lamp, a fan, and a window. The crew quarters are located in different modules of the station, such as the U.S. Harmony module, the European Columbus module, and the Russian Zvezda module. The crew members follow a daily schedule that includes work, leisure, and exercise activities. The work activities consist of performing scientific experiments, maintaining and repairing the station, and preparing for spacewalks and visiting vehicles. The crew members conduct experiments in various fields, such as biology, physics, medicine, and earth science, using the facilities and equipment of the station. The crew members also monitor and operate the station systems, such as the power, life support, thermal control, and communication systems, using the computers and consoles of the station. The crew members also perform spacewalks, or extravehicular activities, EVAs, to install, upgrade, or repair the external components of the station, such as the solar arrays, the radiators, and the antennas. The crew members also receive and send cargo and crew vehicles, such as the SpaceX Dragon, the Northrop Grumman Cygnus, the Russian Soyuz, and the Japanese HEV, which deliver supplies, equipment, and personnel to and from the station. The leisure activities include watching movies, reading books, playing games, listening to music, and enjoying the views of Earth and space. The crew members have access to a library of movies, books, and games, as well as personal items that they bring from Earth. The crew members also have a 360-degree view bay window, called the cupola, where they can observe and photograph the Earth and the stars. The crew members also have regular communication with their families and friends, as well as the ground control teams, using the phone, the email, and the video conference systems of the station. The crew members also celebrate holidays, birthdays, and special occasions with their crewmates, and sometimes receive special treats and gifts from the cargo vehicles. The exercise activities are essential for the crew members to maintain their health and fitness in microgravity, which can cause muscle and bone loss, as well as other effects, such as fluid shifts, vision changes, and immune system changes. The crew members work out at least two hours a day, using the exercise equipment of the station, such as the treadmill, the bike, and the resistance device. The crew members also undergo regular medical checkups and tests, using the medical equipment and devices of the station, such as the ultrasound, the blood pressure monitor, and the electrocardiogram. The crew members also take medications and supplements, as well as follow a balanced diet, 
to prevent and treat any health issues. The crew members also participate in research studies and experiments that aim to understand and improve the effects of spaceflight on the human body and mind. Living and working on the ISS has many benefits and drawbacks for the crew members, such as the views, the weightlessness, the isolation, and the health effects. The views of the Earth and space are stunning and inspiring, and they can enhance the crew members' appreciation and awareness of the beauty and fragility of our planet and the universe. The weightlessness is fun and exciting, and it can enable the crew members to perform tasks and experiments that are impossible or difficult on Earth. The isolation is challenging and stressful, and it can affect the crew members' mood and performance, as well as their relationships with their crewmates and their families. The health effects are serious and complex, and they can impair the crew members' physical and mental well-being, as well as their long-term health and recovery. These are some of the aspects of living and working on the ISS, but there are many more that we will explore. Stay tuned to learn more about the spacewalks, the future plans, and the importance of the ISS for science, exploration, and cooperation. One of the most exciting and challenging activities on the ISS is a spacewalk, or an extravehicular activity, EVA. A spacewalk is an operation in which a crew member goes outside the station and performs tasks that require direct human intervention, such as maintenance, repairs, and upgrades. A spacewalk is necessary for several reasons, such as to install new components, to replace or fix faulty parts, to test new technologies, or to conduct scientific experiments. A spacewalk is also a valuable opportunity to learn and improve the techniques and procedures for future exploration missions, such as to the Moon and Mars. A spacewalk is a complex and risky operation that requires careful planning, preparation, and execution. The crew members use special equipment and procedures to go outside the station and perform their tasks safely and efficiently. The main equipment for a spacewalk is the spacesuit, which is a pressurized garment that protects the crew member from the harsh environment of space, such as vacuum, temperature extremes, radiation, and micrometeoroids. The spacesuit also provides oxygen for breathing, water for cooling, communication devices, lights, cameras, and tools. The spacesuit has a backpack called the Portable Life Support System, PLSS, which contains the main life support functions, such as oxygen supply, carbon dioxide removal, temperature regulation, and battery power. The spacesuit also has a safety tether called the umbilical, which connects the crew member to the station and provides backup power and oxygen. The spacesuit also has a jetpack called the Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue, SEAFER, which can be used in case of an emergency to return to the station. The procedures for a spacewalk include several steps, such as pre-breathing, ingress, egress, translation, work, and cleanup. Pre-breathing is the process of reducing the nitrogen in a crew member's body to prevent decompression sickness, which can occur when the pressure inside the spacesuit is lower than the pressure inside the station. Pre-breathing involves breathing pure oxygen for several hours before the spacewalk, either in the airlock or in a special mask. Ingress is the process of entering the airlock, which is a chamber that separates the pressurized station from the vacuum of space. The crew member puts on the spacesuit, checks the systems, and depressurizes the airlock. Egress is the process of exiting the airlock and going outside the station. The crew member opens the hatch, attaches the umbilical and the seyfier, and releases the hooks. Translation is the process of moving from one location to another on the station. The crew member uses handrails, tethers, and the robotic arm to maneuver around the station. Work is the process of performing the tasks assigned for the spacewalk. The crew member uses various tools and techniques to install, repair, or upgrade the components of the station. Cleanup is the process of finishing the tasks and returning to the airlock. The crew member collects the tools and equipment, retracts the tethers and the umbilical, and closes the hatch. A spacewalk is a rewarding and memorable experience for the crew members, but it also involves some risks and challenges. Some of the risks of a spacewalk are injury, equipment failure, orbital debris, and loss of contact. 
Some of the challenges of a spacewalk are fatigue, workload, visibility, and coordination. A spacewalk also requires a lot of time and resources, such as training, planning, and support. However, a spacewalk also offers some benefits and opportunities, such as the views, the achievements, and the discoveries. A spacewalk allows the crew member to see the Earth and the stars from a unique perspective, and to appreciate the beauty and fragility of our planet and the universe. A spacewalk also allows the crew member to accomplish important and complex tasks, and to contribute to the development and maintenance of the station. A spacewalk also allows the crew member to test and demonstrate new technologies and capabilities, and to advance the knowledge and understanding of space and its effects on humans. We have reached the end of our tour of the ISS, and we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. In this video, we learned about the different modules, systems, and facilities that make up the station, and how they work together to provide a permanent and comfortable environment for humans in space. We also learned about the daily life and activities of the crew members, and how they cope with the challenges and benefits of living and working in microgravity. We also learned about the spacewalks, and how they are performed, and why they are important for the development and maintenance of the station. The ISS is not only a remarkable engineering feat, but also a valuable scientific platform and a symbol of international cooperation. The ISS enables us to conduct research and experiments that can improve our knowledge and understanding of space and its effects on humans, as well as benefit life on Earth and beyond. The ISS also fosters collaboration and friendship among different countries and agencies, and inspires future generations of explorers and innovators. The ISS is a testament to what humans can achieve when they work together for a common goal. The ISS is not done yet, as it has many more plans and goals for the future. The ISS is expected to operate until at least 2030, and possibly beyond, depending on the technical and political factors. The ISS also plans to host more commercial and international partners, and to expand its capabilities and services, such as tourism, manufacturing, and education. The ISA also plans to support missions to the Moon and Mars, and to serve as a gateway and a testbed for deep space exploration. The ISS is a stepping stone for humanity's journey to the stars. Thank you for watching this video, and we hope you learned something new and interesting. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you want to see more videos like this, Please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of our new videos. We appreciate your support and feedback, and we look forward to seeing you again in our next video. Until then, stay curious and keep exploring. This is Spaceverse, signing off.